While taking a look at this footage, it's hard to think that it was just two years ago, not this face, but the footage you're about to see. COVID has changed the way we shop, live and work. And a new book is hoping to capture some of the tough decisions many of Canada's business leaders had to make. Andrew Willis is the co-editor of Unprecedented, Canada's top CEOs on leadership during COVID-19. Uh, it's a fascinating read, Andrew. Appreciate you joining us this morning. So many similarities in the various chapters in this book here. All these CEOs getting together and really being candid and acknowledging Really, I found your Andrew, Andrew it was stunning the similarity that they just didn't know what they didn't know, but had to make some pretty big decisions. Yeah, Nick, thanks so much for having me on. Not only did they not know what to do, they just weren't getting guidance from anywhere. So we've got 30 CEOs at restaurant chains, at hotels, at grocery stores, and you get these wonderful moments like the um, the company that owns Swiss Chalet, for example. They had all their restaurant owners on the phone line. They were waiting for guidance, first from uh, Trudeau and then from Premier Ford uh, in a series of press conferences. Uh, and they had to make a decision on whether or not to shut down the restaurants. None of the politicians would make a decision. And it fell on the head of Recipe Unlimited, the owner of Swiss Chalet and uh, Harvey's. He had to make a call during a conference call and shut down all the restaurants across Canada. It was it was an, an unbelievable time. And what we've got in the book is just this series of, of great stories on how leaders made decisions during the um, during the pandemic and the new ground that they had to to uh, forge. They they had to make decisions based not so much on profits and losses, Nick, but on you know what was good for their community, what was good for their employees, what was good for their customers. Um, I think it was a, actually a, a time where leaders and CEOs learned a lot as did all of us, you know, on, on how to manage through a crisis. Yeah, I mean, like you said, and, and this doesn't just cover restaurants. I mean, we're talking about gyms, we're talking banks, we're talking, you know, other food services operations like Tim Hortons, which, you know, roll up the rim is sort of a, an event that happens in March every year. They made the decision before they knew what was happening to scrap that and go purely digital. That, that transition to digital, even when you talk about good life as well, right? So much digital happened based on the pandemic and the CEOs had to sort of go into this and accelerate their plans. But in many cases, Andrew, it, it worked out almost for the better, it seemed. It, it did work out for the better. But one of the good examples is the Sobeys grocery chain. They had a four-year plan to roll out home delivery on a service that's called Voila. Mm -hmm. We're now so used to the, the trucks. Well, that Voila service during the pandemic had to be rolled out in four months. Huge strain on their IT capacity. And, and you know, the CEO was, was very frank about, you know, this was a real struggle for us. But everybody pitched in. And as a result, they, they've got a really robust home delivery service they never would have had it otherwise so coming on the other side Sobeys looks great and, and financially is performing well but at the time the strain on their system and the you know the is this going to work out can we get this up and running can people still get food those were real issues for one of the biggest grocery chains in the company and Andrew you know country. while while your book is a compilation of stories from CEOs I, I really felt as I was reading it that, that it felt like a sort of testament to the the, the resilience and the hard work of the Canadian workers, right? That everybody can relate to what happened at whatever company you work at, whether it's the Globe and Mail, whether it's Bell Media, CP24, et cetera. All of us had to adapt and change. And in many cases, the Canadian workforce did what needed to be done. Well, that's just it. And, and, and there was a real can-do spirit. You know, you, you mentioned that the... Um, uh, the toilet paper manufacturers, they were working double and triple shifts to, to make sure that, that paper stayed on the shelves. And and even companies in, in areas where you wouldn't think, oh, they had much to do with the pandemic directly, like Canada Goose, you know, they're making right. parkets and, and they got shut down early in the pandemic. Um, well, Canada Goose ended up repurposing all their assembly lines and making um, surgical scrubs. They made gear, protective gear for hospitals. Uh, and then they sold that at cost as opposed to making a profit. So, and that was all, you know, inspired by the workforce. The other thing that, that, that we saw was just the agility of a lot of these companies. They were able to get ideas from the front lines. For example, at Circle K, the convenience store operators, they're a big global company, but based in Canada. And one of their stores in Poland, which had early experience with COVID, they designed the plexiglass to keep the cashiers safe. That was then moved up to head office and then out to all the Canadian stores within the space of a couple of weeks. It's that that agility, that quick decision making. That was sort of a hallmark of what we learned in, in COVID was that when you get a good idea from the workforce, it's got to move through the company really quickly. And that, I think, is a is a real sign of strength that a lot of a lot of um, uh, the employees worked well with the management to get ideas to keep people safe. That that I think was a 
a huge breakthrough in, yeah. in the way we communicate across our companies. Yeah, it certainly was, Andrew, and it was really interesting to see how the internet companies with the international arms, especially ones in China, were really being able to sort of play in uh, what they've learned. Listen, Andrew Willis, appreciate the time. Unprecedented is out now, and uh, certainly an interesting front row seat to how CEOs handle the pandemic. Appreciate your time this morning. Thanks, Nick. Thank you.